Hey guys, me and the team at Optimize Reach made this video to help you take advantage of negative keywords for your Google Ad search campaign. Creating a negative keyword plan will help save you a lot of money with your Google Ads. Negative keywords prevent your ad from showing to people that are not your target audience. So you'll save a lot of money by avoiding unproductive clicks. You'll also save a lot of money by improving your quality score for your keywords. Your quality score determines how much Google will charge you for every click. So if you have a good quality score, you pay a lot less per click than if you have a bad quality score. Because negative keywords will prevent your ad from showing up on searches that don't match your ad, this will improve your click-through rate, which also improves your quality score. And if you're only showing your ad to your target audience, you will also be much more likely to have people that click on your ad and stay on your landing page longer and be more likely to actually perform an action on your landing page, which are both two things that improve your quality score. I mean, I hope you're noticing a trend here. There are a ton of ways a good negative keyword plan will help improve your campaign. Finally, if you're going to use any broad match keywords, then you must have a good negative keyword list. So now that we know having a good negative keyword list is super important, what should you do? So let's look at some of the types of negative keywords. For example, let's say you own a store that sells glasses, like sunglasses. But for your ad, you want to have wine glasses as your negative keyword. You don't want your ad to run if somebody did a search for wine glasses. So how do we add that in? We can add wine glasses as a negative broad match. And what that means is if both of the words wine and glasses appear in someone's search in any order, your ad won't show. And that's what happens when you use a broad map. If they do best wine glasses, your ad wouldn't show because both wine glasses are in the search term. If they did glasses for drinking wine, you can see both words showing up. So your ad would not display for that search query. But if they were to enter which glass should I use to drink wine, that wouldn't work because you entered for your negative keyword wine glasses, plural. And it's very tricky with negative keywords, they won't match to close variants. So you need to have plural and unplural words both entered separately. Basically, you would need to have wine glasses and wine glass both entered separately if you wanted to prevent your ad from being displayed when somebody does the query which glass should I use to drink wine so it's a little trickier than just your regular keyword research so you will use broad match a lot and that's the benefit of it both words have to match in any order now with phrase match if you entered, like we said before, wine glasses as a phrase match negative keyword, then it would have to be in the person search query exactly wine and glasses in that order to prevent your ad from running. So if they entered best wine glasses, your ad would not run. But if they entered a query for glasses for drinking wine, because while those words both appear, they are not in order then the phrase match wouldn't work to keep your ad prevent your ad from just being displayed and the option that you probably won't use that often at all which would be the exact match so with the brackets if you had wine glasses then if somebody did an exact search just for those words exactly no words added after or before then the negative keyword would work your ad would not be triggered but it has to be precisely and exactly in that term so you have broad match, phrase match, and exact match. And those are your negative keyword types. So your next step is to take the negative keywords you want to use and organize them by putting them into some basic keyword lists that you will apply to your campaigns. Your first keyword list that you should create is your universal list. These are words that you wouldn't want to use like 99% of the time. So some of these words might be pretty basic, like video, 
jobs, careers, salary, tutorial, adult words. If you're trying to sell something like a product or a service, you might want to have some non-buying words in there like how, what, when, free, cheap. So these are just basic words that you, if somebody's doing a search query with one of those words in there, you don't want your ad to show because it's really not your target audience. The next type of list you want to create has to do with locations. Locations that you don't want your ad displayed in. Maybe you don't ship to that location or if it's a service you don't service that location. So that's list number two. And finally industry specific terms. Like in the example we talked about before if you were selling sunglasses and wine glasses would be one of the keywords you wanted to use maybe that's in this group so it could be you know depending on how you create your campaigns these lists can be applied to the entire account or they can be applied at the campaign level or at the ad group level so that's another reason why you're making different lists because you can apply them to different levels of your campaign or your account let me give you some examples here. We can go to a real live account and then you'll see um, what I mean. Okay, so I've come to my dashboard. This is an actual Google Ads dashboard having all of my campaign. And I can go to this campaign here to show you. This is a house cleaning campaign for a home services company. The home services company does house cleaning, carpet cleaning, and we've separated campaigns by services. And here I can go to our negative keywords. We have four lists. A master list, a locations list, a house cleaning list. So this is negative keywords that only apply to house cleaning campaigns. And a competitors list. If you go to the carpet cleaning campaign, you can see that master list and the locations and the competitors, the same negative keyword lists also are found, but it doesn't have the house cleaning negative keywords. It has a carpet negative keywords list. So we keep some of these keyword lists the same. And then we have certain negative keyword lists that just apply to different services. So we try to keep everything organized. And some of these might not apply to you. If you sell products online and you ship everywhere, maybe a locations, a negative no locations list isn't relevant to you but in some cases especially if you have a service area it would be good to have a negative keyword list and again let me show you a little bit wh why if we look at the settings for the campaign we've targeted some locations to have our ad show and we've also excluded some locations. but it's not as simple as that if you look at the location options for your Google ad campaign it even shows you in here it's not perfect we've selected to target people who are in or regularly in the targeted locate there's gonna be times when the ad gets shown maybe they're normally in our location but for whatever reason when they're doing the search they're in a different city well our ad still might trigger for them because normally they're in Phoenix so it's not perfect and when you run a campaign long enough and you have very localized services that you'll start seeing some cities pop up and some locations pop up time and time again that you simply can't do anything with and so it's good to have that locations negative keyword list that you can continuously add to it just helps keep your campaign as cost effective as possible but maybe that doesn't apply to you and so you don't have to worry about that keyword list um, as an example for competitors we have some competitors that are very inexpensive and we've noticed if somebody does a search query for that competitor they're looking for a really low price point. And so we want to avoid our ad showing to a customer that we know is just looking for the cheapest service possible. So that's why we would keep a competitor's list. We also have competitors that are very expensive and we're obviously fine with having our ad show when somebody looks for that company specifically. So we wouldn't necessarily want to add them we wouldn't want to add all of our competition we would want to be thinking about it and have a plan behind it but there's going to be times when it makes sense to avoid certain competitors for certain campaigns you might have a need to have a few different lists but the more lists that you keep it's just going to create a lot of back-end work for you and you want to avoid that 
So before you start your campaign, you are going to create some basic lists like we talked about before. But a lot of your negative keywords are going to come after your campaign's been active. So let me show you how you would do that. And you always want to be keeping a close eye on your campaign. And here in our dashboard, we can go to the campaign and we click on search terms. And what this is going to show us, these are actual search terms that somebody has done a search query for and it's triggered our ad. And this shows you, for example, in this particular, this is house cleaning services, that's the search term that triggered our ad. It triggered it for our keyword of house cleaning service. And this gives you all the information you need to see. There was 174 impressions, we got 38 clicks, a click-through rate of 21.8%. All the information you need to know. And right away, if you study this list enough, you'll find keywords that you might want to eliminate, but you'll also find search terms that you want to add to your negative keyword list. Like right here, this is zero res. This company does carpet cleaning. I don't want my house cleaning ad to run if somebody's looking for a carpet cleaning company. You can even see how much lower this click-through rate is. This is hurting me because if you have a, even though I'm not getting charged unless somebody clicks, if you have a low click-through rate, it impacts your quality score, and Google will charge you more for every click if you have a poor quality score. So it does actually cost you money in the long run to have too many keywords with low click-through rate. So I want to add this to my negative keyword list. I don't want to run a house cleaning ad if somebody's looking for a carpet cleaning company. That's not a good match. So I'd click on it. I add it as a negative keyword, and now I have my choices. I can add it to an ad group, a campaign, or a negative keyword list. And that's what I want to do. I want to add it to my house cleaning keyword list uh, because this is specifically a bad word just for the house cleaning campaign. And you can see by default the search terms are added as exact match negative keywords. That's what these brackets are here for. Meaning if the person did a search query exactly for zero res, no words before, no words after, my ad wouldn't run. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove these brackets. So now I've turned this into a broad match negative keyword. So that means that anywhere in the search query, if somebody has zero res in there, my ad will not show. So I'm gonna save it and now we've added that and we've only added it to that one list, the house cleaning list. So I don't have to worry about it impacting campaigns that don't have the house cleaning negative keyword list attached to it. You could also search by results. So I can go by this click through rate here and I could look at the keywords that are the lowest click through rate. This doesn't mean that if it's a bad click through rate that you definitely want to remove it, but this could just be one way of using you know, using these categories to find words that don't match. Here we can see carpet cleaner rentals. It definitely wouldn't apply to house cleaning. So I'm going to also add this as a negative keyword. I'm going to add it to my negative keyword list of house cleaning. So I change it from the exact match to a broad match. Now if somebody does a search query that has these three words in there, carpet cleaner and rental, in any order, it doesn't matter, but it would need all three of the words, my ad will not trigger. So I save it and now I've excluded that as well, just from house cleaning. And you should be doing this, you know, all of the time for your campaigns. It's just going to save you money. It's going to make your campaigns more cost effective, more productive. And to show you an as example, if we look at this campaign, here's the quality score that I was talking about. So you can look at your search query, your search keywords. These are the words you're bidding on. Okay, if, especially if you're bidding per click. You really should be paying attention to your quality score. A better quality score means you're going to be paying a lot less for your ad. So this does matter. And one way to get better quality scores is to have a really good negative keyword. Okay, well that just about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found it helpful and learned a lot about negative keywords. Please like and subscribe and drop any questions you have below in the comments. You can also find all our contact info in the notes for this video. If you're looking for any help with your Google Ads, we're here to help. And please check out our channel for more Google Ad tutorials and digital marketing videos. See you next time.